So let's think about this. We're in a rich country. We worry about rich people things. We're fighting about vaccine mandates right now, right? Like we see workers, they're leaving their job. They don't like the mandates. Some healthcare workers are even leaving their job. Some companies, they're even mandating that spouses, spouses get the vaccine. Even, you know, if he, she doesn't leave the house, it doesn't matter. You're mandated, get the vaccine. We're fighting over kids, school kids. Should we mandate it in them? The governor of California recently tweeted out. He said, we will, we will mandate this vaccine in our kids when the FDA approves it. He was very confident, it was a very confident tweet. Mandates for flights, trains, all forms of transportation. We're fighting over vaccine passports, right? Here in New York City, you can't go inside a bar, a restaurant. You can't see a play unless you show the guy or gal at the door your vaccination card, right? You need to show them that you have received at least one dose of a messenger RNA vaccine. One dose. If you show them that, you're good to go. You can get right in. Technically, you could go to the drugstore in the morning, get your shot of Pfizer, and then that very same night, you can go to the bar, party it up, drink your face off, make out with the bartender, make out with whoever, dance on the bar, puke on your way to the bar bathroom, not a mask in sight. You can do all of that as long as you show the bartender that you got one shot of the messenger RNA vaccine. Never mind, never mind that the CDC has been very clear on this, that you are not considered fully vaccinated until 14 days after that second shot. Never mind that. These policies, ladies and gentlemen, are about protecting everybody. We're fighting over boosters. People are confused over boosters. They don't know because they kind of like the guidelines for that one group, the younger group that they might have a higher risk based on their occupation. They're, they might not. They're not really sure. They left it up to them, you know, left it up to them. I was talking to this guy the other day and he was like, yeah, you know, I'm fully vaccinated. And I'm not really sure if I should get my booster or not. My doctor didn't even know because, you know, the guidelines. So I have to figure this out. And I'm like, they leave, they're leaving the, your booster decision up to you. Like, you don't even wash your socks. And you're like, well, maybe it's safe, maybe it's not. <laughs> you know who we're not talking about, though? We're not talking about Big Pharma and what Big Pharma is doing. You know, those guys that made these vaccines. Do you know that they sent only... 0.5%, less than that, less than 0.5% of their total vaccine supply to poor countries. Do you know that less than 1% of people in poor countries are vaccinated? Less than 1%. That means, guys, that their highest risk, right? Old people with underlying conditions, they're not vaccinated. It's not even on their radar because they don't even have them. But we're over here, we're over here fighting, you know, posting memes on social media to support our, our side. We're over here labeling each other as either an anti-vaxxer or a corporate shill because there's nothing in between. We're over here enforcing vaccine passport policies that make no scientific sense, really. We're more worried about whether our kids and kindergarten at private school should wear a mask and whether or not they should put a cover on their trumpets for their private trumpet lessons. <laughs> We're not really worried about all those poor people in those other countries over there, are we? And Big Pharma loves it, man. Big Pharma loves it. They love that we're distracted with, you know, pulling each other's hair out and fighting because they're laughing. They are laughing all the way to the bank. They are. I mean, take boosters, right? Now, boosters is a rich country thing and we're fighting about that. Pfizer is supposed to bring in, I think, $26 billion on boosters alone. Moderna is going to bring in $14 billion, right? I mean, wow. But we're not talking about them not sending vaccines to all these poor people in these other countries. And, you know, even if we're a bunch of narcissistic a-holes, and a lot of us are, because we don't think about all these other countries, we should, we should think about helping them for purely selfish reasons, guys, and here's why. COVID-19 is a global airborne virus, okay? It travels through the air, it travels fast. It doesn't need a passport, ironically. It can cross oceans really fast, bring new variants. I mean, think about the variants that we're, we have now, Delta. I mean, that didn't come from the US. There's variants from South America, you know. These variants come from other places. A lot of people think, oh, these variants, they're coming from 
that guy in that trailer wearing a MAGA hat drinking bleach, but no, they're actually not. They're coming from all these other places. And until we help them, we're not really gonna solve the bigger issue here. You know what I mean? Like we're all losing sight of the forest for the trees. And you know why? You know why? It's simple. Big Pharma has us all by the balls. Every single one of us, Big Pharma has us by the balls, our metaphorical balls. They do, guys. They do. They got us good.